Call of Duty Black Ops 6 has taken the world by storm. In the multiplayer, there are many, many maps to choose from. And in this video today, I'm going to tell you which are the best and which are not so good as we rank every single one in the game. Well, just the base maps of the uh, core modes, not the uh, strike maps for the 2v2 and the other 6v6 modes. We're just sticking to the regular base ones. I found most of those to be a little too tiny to fairly rank them among the uh, normal size maps, so we're gonna stick to just the core ones. And as always, on this channel, remember, I'm someone that keeps it real, and I swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. I promise. Also, make sure you stick around because a couple of these might surprise you, and for videos like this, please don't get your panties in a bunch when we disagree. And yes, I said when we disagree, because opinions are opinions, and and mostly you're gonna probably disagree and agree with some it's just the way opinions go so yeah if you wouldn't mind chill out with the death threats in the comments and it's not it's really not that serious but ultimately in a friendly manner let me know in the comments what maps you like or dislike Thank you everyone watching this. If you do enjoy today's video, make sure you subscribe and hit that like button it helps me out a ton. Uh, I appreciate that but let's get back to the video number 12. All right, let's start this off at number 12 out of 12. In my personal opinion, there's a lot of decent maps in Black Ops 6. I don't think any of them are quite legendary, but there's a lot of good on this list after the first couple two. The bottom two, in my opinion, are both pretty bad. Here at 12, though, Red Card, if you ask me, is extremely bad and was an easy choice for me to put at the very, very bottom of this list. I found myself constantly walking around bored on this map and I feel like that's the last thing you should be doing on a Call of Duty map of all things. I'm a Battlefield player at heart so I do like big maps and respect them but as far as Call of Duty goes I feel like it's a lot harder for it to work. Ultimately the design of the map just feels like it tried to do way too much and it leads to not fun gameplay most of the time. You'll walk around and not find anybody for a good bit and I just don't think that's great. And really that's the main reason I don't like the map. I mean I guess the look of it's pretty cool but overall if you're not finding players to have fun with it's just bad. Number 11. And here at 11 is maybe the first one that's going to give me the death threats and the negative comments in the comments, which is fine. Like I said, we have different opinions and that happens. This is one of those picks that I feel like is probably controversial, but in my honest opinion, that's this is how I feel about it. I've seen a lot of mixed opinions on this one, to be honest, though. Like there are some people out there that do feel like this map is not very good. And there's others that absolutely love it and put it in their top three from what I've seen on like Reddit and Twitter and stuff. For me, red card though is a whole different tier of bad, so let me just put that out there. Scud is not that bad, but it's still bad in my opinion, if that makes any sense. To me, when a map pops up for your next game and you roll your eyes because you don't want to play it, that's probably a bad sign and that's how I feel about this map. Scud just feels kind of lazy to me, like it's a very open map minus a giant satellite dish that went down in the middle. I, I just find myself not liking most very large maps in Call of Duty, like I said on the last one, and this is another one I just feel like it's not massive, but it's large enough to feel like it's, it is huge because you don't see a lot of people. It just promotes a lot of people hiding and sniping, and that's just not the type of Call of Duty gameplay I'm in for. I'm cool with sniping being part of it, but I don't like it being the heavy part of it for a map. And that's this kind of map right here. Overall, the map, though, just doesn't have much flow to it either. It can be boring from time to time, like Red Card, but not as bad. It depends on the lobby, really. Number 10. All right, coming in at the uh, 10 spot in the top 10, and this actually worked out really well because for me, all the, all the maps in the top 10 are pretty decent at worst. None of these are bad. So just so you know, like 10 subsonic, I don't feel like it's bad. I struggled a little bit to figure out the order for the next few, including Subsonic, but I went with this one at 10. I feel like a lot of these kind of like mesh together because they're all decent. This has you fighting in a very, very small hangar in the middle most of the time. There's a center area surrounded by an exterior circle-like thing. It's a typical COD map, especially Black Ops 6. They use this design a lot. You'll hear me say that a lot in this video. This is one of the two tiny, tiny maps in BO6 for me. It's just something about it doesn't work as well as the other tiny map that we'll mention further in the video. Disclosure, are these maps as tiny as shipment? No but tiny enough for pure uncontrolled chaos, which is the thing I do enjoy about it, but at the same time, it can be a little much. 
They also give you options to open up the hangar doors, which I found pretty cool to give you a couple different ways to enter the middle area, which is nice and make it feel a little larger when these giant doors are open. When you're in your center area, though, I hope you have some energy drinks or coffee in your system because you're going to need it to stay alert to every single spot that you can get hit from, which is the part of the map that I just feel like isn't very well designed, but it's part of the chaos that I think they're promoting here. Overall, like I said, average map. You'll have a little bit of fun here sometimes and a little bit not fun sometimes. Number nine. Low Town is another map I've heard some mixed opinions on, and to be honest, over the last week, I went through my ups and downs with it as well. The main issue I have with it is its outside little area. For me, the middle of the map is very well done, very well designed. This is where a lot of the fun takes place in buildings as you weave in and out of them. Like the dead, dead center is where all the fun is going to be had, and it has some really good gunfights, close quarter battles. It the uh, Omni movement is very good for this area or just to get around this map period I will say the outer rim area is where I have a big problem with this map The large size is really the thing that's keeping it out of the top five for me because most of this outside area is just kind of a waste There's way too much water as well. I know switch it up different things the water just kind of becomes a bit annoying for me and the rest of the outside area, like I said, there's just barely any action most of the time and it just feels like wasted space. This map really honestly feels like two maps in one. And I think it would suit Low Town to be a smaller map and maybe get rid of a third of it. And it would have been a lot higher on this list. Number eight. Here's another map I struggled to get a solid opinion on, mostly because I rarely played it if I'm being real, as it almost never came up for some reason, whether it's voting or people voting it to play it. I've legit only played this map four or five times in a week. I even had to go into a private match just to make sure I explored it properly before ranking it on here because I never really truly grasped it, I feel like. So I kind of just threw it in the middle here. I feel like it could easily bump up one or two or go down one or two, but like I said, I barely got to check it out. I found this map to be pretty good though. It has similar design to much of these maps in this game with the outside area surrounded by an inner area. The vault reminds me a little bit of Mirage from Black Ops 2, which is pretty good if you ask me to be compared to that map. It has this cool little area underground in the middle giving you options of how to get around and options for me is always most of the time good i won't say always the atmosphere itself is pretty cool it feels like a classic call of duty desert type of feel it all works the overall flow of the map is also pretty good most times you'll get a good mix up of players in the middle and the exterior which leads to snipers and close quarter battles which is always good number seven all right, number seven, Vorkuta, the snow map. These next couple maps are actually a little surprising to me. They made it this high on this list because I was not too fond of them at first. When you first enter Vorkuta, it's a snow map, and I instantly got nostalgia vibes, and it grabbed my attention, and I'm like, ooh, snow map. Please be as amazing as Summit from the original Black Ops. And that's where I think a lot of the hate originally came from me because it's nowhere near Summit for me, but I eventually figured out that it's not bad either. First off, it's a bigger map than Summit, but the design of it as a whole is actually pretty good. It takes a bit of exploring and some time for you to figure out where you're at. It gets a little confusing at first, but once you do, there's a ton of cool places to battle it out here. It's very well designed for flow and options as well, as you'll hear me say a lot because that's important with Call of Duty. You can literally have an entire map on the interior areas, or you can head to the middle and fight in these open long range areas. So you can have two different battles in one, depending on the type of player you are. And that for me is the stuff I like in a bigger map. Give us options and don't force me as a close quarter aggressive player to run down the middle of an open field or wherever an open area to get sniped by lazy snipers just chilling. It's just nice to see the snipers have a fair chance against the close quarter people and the close quarter people have a fair chance against the uh, long range people as well. So yeah, Vorkuta overall pretty decent map belongs kind of in the middle for me. Number six. Protocol. As I mentioned for Vorkuta, the last entry, uh, this was on my naughty list the first couple days of BO6, and not just the bad list, Protocol was 100% at the very, very bottom for me for the first couple days, and it had a lot to do with me just getting shredded the first 10 matches or so I played, if I'm being honest. 
I don't know what it is about this map, but it took me a long time to learn it and get used to it. But now looking back, I think that's a massive strength of protocol when I super judge it. Once you learn, you have so many different areas in one map that all work pretty well. It really works. The main areas are the two giant houses on each side, and I don't know how Call of Duty continues to make houses so much fun, but they really are and they work well here. And they give you this cool underneath way to travel between the houses, as some Call of Duty maps like to do, which normally would be a little narrow path, but Protocol actually makes this like a really decent sized area that's like a whole nother map underneath. Multiple players can sit there and go at it, with also another decent sized area on the outside to the side as well that has a few different approach points, which is what I'm talking about. It takes a little bit to learn all these different ways you could go. One big negative I still have is on this specific map uh, is the spawns. I know that's a Call of Duty thing all the time. It's a big issue for Call of Duty, but the spawn trapping in here for me, like really, really sets me off still to this day. It just sucks. You'll get killed and for some reason, it'll keep putting you on side A when there's four or five enemies that just killed you on side A and it will put you there another time or two for whatever reason before finally realizing that it should put you on B. So you have another two or three deaths on your stat list for no reason at all and you have like no chance because there's multiple enemies around you and you barely have any teammates. I don't know why this map does that, but that's really the big flaw for me that kind of brings it down. Number five. As we enter the top five, we begin with a map that had potential of being, to be honest, number one or two on this list, but doesn't quite hit that mark. It will go down as the potential map for me. I love the setting of Rewind. It feels like the classic Modern Warfare 2 map more than a Black Ops thing, which isn't a bad thing, I guess, because I love Modern Warfare, but it doesn't quite fit in with the vibe of this game. This is another map, though, that's great for both styles of players, which is always a win for Call of Duty. The entire one half of the map is a bunch of businesses that you could go in with shotguns, SMGs, whatever you want to choose for close quarter combat. And the other half is like wide open streets that also you could kind of get away with the SMGs a little bit out there, but it obviously prefers snipers to be like out there. This fatal flaw of the map is kind of hard to explain, but I'll do my best. Experienced players that know the map well still don't get like a good idea where enemies are, if that makes any sense at all. Enemies are just very scattered all over the place and hard to predict where they're going to be or where you're going to get hit from is my best way of putting it. That's also a positive as well because it leads to gameplay variety, but as experienced players play this, I feel like you want to kind of have an advantage of knowing the map and you would like some knowledge of where to cover your ass. And there's just a lot of like four or five different angles no matter where you're at that you can get hit from in most areas. This map really does provide a good bit of everything though and I think that's why it lands in my top five and overall very good map. Number four. All right, number four, this train yard looking map might be another controversial pick. This is more of a personal one for me than an actual like critical one. If I'm using my critic brain, I could probably drop this down a couple to the middle of the pack, but my personal opinion factors in here heavily too. This map is a perfect example of why a map can suck, but I also enjoy it at the same time for whatever reason, if that makes any sense to you. I think it's difficult because it's not very super well designed, but at the same time, there are a couple areas that can just lead to loads of fun. This has a similar power position play area with a rundown building in the middle surrounded by this big wall on the outside perimeter of it. This is where most of the fun fighting happens and I would recommend you go to if you want to enjoy this map. It could be pretty great if you want to hold it down for a bit and have some fun fighting here. I think you'll enjoy this map. The rest of the map is where I struggled a little bit. I got killed a lot out here from a bunch of different angles. It's kind of hard to understand where everyone could come from and you it just kind of ends up being a random thing for me. Just something about weaving in and out of trains in the train yard is just fun at the same time though. So it just doesn't bother me that I get my ass kicked out here. This map is just one of those that I'd love to hear your opinion about in the comments because I feel like it sways both ways pretty heavily like some people have it in their top three even and some people absolutely hate this map and like i said from as far as me getting killed wise i probably should drop it but in my personal opinion i had fun so that's where it is it's number four Babylon. This is the type of map that you want to go on and have some energetic fun. The top three worked out really well here because I think these top three are easily the best maps in the game and they're on a separate tier from the last nine or so or seven or so I guess because the bottom two are pretty down there. The issue I had was ordering these top three properly because they're all pretty great in their own way. 
and none of them are legendary standout maps. Let's begin at three though with Babylon. This is the other tiny map that I previously mentioned in Black Ops 6. It's once again an outside circle area with a center fighting area. I think for me, just the chaotic fun flow of the map is the difference maker here. It's not as ridiculous as you get shot the second you spawn, but a couple seconds after spawning, you better be ready for some gunfight action because it's coming your way. I like when these small maps aren't overpowered by spawn trapping, and since the beta, I feel like the spawning got really, really improved, I guess, in this map, drastically, actually. Because in the beta, this map was a fucking mess, but now it's a lot better. Unlike most maps, the exterior circle area is where the fun's at here as well. It's not like most of the maps, I feel like the center area is where you want to be at, but I think the outside sticking to that is where you'll enjoy yourself the most. It, it provides you plenty of things to cover behind so you don't get hit immediately. And yes, you will get killed quickly, but I wouldn't say super quickly because you can actually like take advantage of the cover. Plus the Omni movement here is absolutely amazing for this map. You could slide up and down the staircases in the middle if you want or weave your way in and out of all the cover on the outside and it just leans into a lot of fun aggressive power play moves. I'd recommend staying away from the middle area though if you want to have a really good time on this map. It, I mean it is fun in the middle as well but if you want to slightly have a chance of even getting a score streak for instance, stay away from it. Number two. All right, number two, don't kill me over this one because I feel like this is everyone's top favorite at the moment for the first week of Black Ops 6. And it's still my number two by a very slim margin though, I will say. I have no argument if this is number one on your list. I get it. Skyline instantly hit me though in the feels when you first go in and I will say from first impressions, it was my number one. Only because it has vibes of hijacked when you just look around, maybe my favorite Call of Duty map ever. And to be quite honest, in the long run, I still feel like it gives those hijacked vibes pretty well. It's just not on a boat. It's like a not boat version of hijacked. It has this cool underneath path area that's very slim and narrow to go through to get from one side to the other, much like Hijacked. Hijacks is a little bit more open than this one, but it has the same kind of feel to it. I'm not sure if many players even know about it yet, to be completely honest with you, because I barely saw any players going down there the entire week of playing this game, but it's a great way to surprise your opposing uh, adversaries on the other side of the map. Tons of rooms to fight in as well if you're up top. This feels like it's your typical three lane map like it wants to be, but I think it's more of like a two lane map on two different floors, which opens it up for a lot of fun. Hell, they even have a swimming pool in the middle of it that can lead to some unique kills and escapes from time to time. It's just, it's unique. Sometimes COD maps are just a vibe thing and Skyline has all the vibes you could ever ask for in a Call of Duty map. Number one. And last but certainly not least is Payback as my favorite map overall in Black Ops 6. And I'm not gonna lie, it's simply just from that giant house in the center of it. Payback is on the small side, I would say. It's, it's a little bit bigger than the other two I previously mentioned. It just has this well-designed house in the middle of it that separates it from those other two to make it feel a little larger than it is. I mean, the house itself is a two-lane map by itself. Fighting downstairs, you, or you could go upstairs, it's two completely different things. The upstairs has the main power position area that you want to gain control of if possible. Even without that power position area though, you can avoid it and fight downstairs and still be inside with some awesome areas, including this little middle area you could slide in and out of. If I'm being real about this map though, I think the main thing for me is it screams 2010's Treyarch map all day, like early 2010's Black Ops 1, 2. I feel like if you drop this map in those two games, it would fit right in amongst all those great maps that Black Ops 1 and 2 had. And like I said, the middle house area is the main attraction here, but the outside area is pretty good as well in its own right. The outside area just gives this map the perfect variety it needs for plenty of replayability to keep the map from getting too old. And every playstyle is still in full effect here as well. For a smaller map, that is a big W if you ask me. If you get the power position or the outside area, you can still be effective as a sniper player. And of course, the aggressive close quarter combat is great on the entire map. Payback by far is the only one I fanboy over in this game though. And that is why it comes in at number one on my list. But of course, I'd love to hear your opinion of the number one map in Black Ops 6 for you guys, or just what you think of my list in general, or some of the worst maps you have as well. Feedback and opinions are always more than welcomed in the comments section of the videos on this channel. 
I am working on a full in-depth review of Black Ops 6 that should be arriving on the channel sometime later next week. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay in tune when my videos go up. Also like the video if you enjoyed this video today, it helps me out a ton. But overall, have a great rest of your day. That's going to be it from me. See ya!